All right, well, uh, let's get started. And um, everyone, thanks for joining this webinar today. And um, thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Tommy Voltman from Soliton Systems. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to join today. Uh, today's theme for this webinar is 4G and 5G live video transmission tips. And we will be talking about how to successfully stream quality video over the 4G and 5G network. And just like everyone else these days, we're doing this webinar from our homes. And today we have with us our mobile video transmission specialist, Aki Abe, who will talk about these video transmission tips. Thank you, Aki. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining it. Thank you. So uh, we have a exciting webinar for you today. We're gonna show you some slides and then Aki will take us through a live demo and then uh, we'll open it up for uh, questions and answers. And if uh, everyone has any questions, you know, please post them in the Q&A chat box you see on your screen. And then, uh, yes, let those questions come in. And uh, we, we love Q&A. But, uh, but first, you know, in case you're wondering, you know, who Soliton Systems is, here's a quick background and how our solutions can create values for companies and organizations where live streaming is an important requirement. Uh, Soliton Systems is a Japanese technology company, and one of the solutions we specialize is in video codec IP and video transmission technologies. We were first to market on a H.265 video encoder. We were first to market on the world's smallest video encoder. And this is exciting. We just released the world's first H.265 ultra low latency video encoder with 35 milliseconds latency. That's right, 35 milliseconds, which is a very exciting topic, but th that's gonna be for another webinar. Here's a snapshot of Soliton's core technology. All of our encoders are built on the H.265 HEVC engine. And by the way, we also have a H.265 mobile app for iPhones and Android phones. Uh, which we're going to talk about a little bit today, but uh, we'll have another webinar on that topic. But uh, with everything going remote these days, and a lot of our video professionals streaming from their homes or from their home studios or for their, from their bedrooms, you know, this H.265 mobile app and a HD viewing software is a very good solution where we integrate our in intelligent encoding engine into our app. And in a moment, we'll have Aki talk about our intelligent encoding that is optimized for commercial LTE, where we provide stable video streaming even at the most challenging low bandwidth environments. And our decades of experience in IT security is what makes our technology solutions robust and secure and where we send encrypted video over the network. We have been providing and serving the broadcasting public safety and mobility markets. And here's some of the use cases. You know, of course, broadcasting, streaming live from events, news, anywhere really, anywhere to anywhere. And as video professionals, we all know that you get one chance for video streaming. You capture the moment and you stream it live and you need stable and reliable technology to enable that live streaming. And let me ask you this, what if you don't have stable internet? What if your 4G or network is spotty? What if you're at a stadium with 20,000 other people. Well, we're not doing that quite yet, but what if you are in a stadium with all these people who are all using 4G and 5G? You know, bandwidth is always gonna be an issue. It's critical. Or what if your live stream and disconnects when it gets down to 500 kilobits? What are you gonna do? You got only one chance. If you're covering a live event, or if you are covering election coverage, or if you're capture, capturing a big news event, Reliability is crucial. And this is where our technology comes in. Japanese developed, Japanese made quality technology that you can trust and rely on at these crucial moments. You know, bottom line, we deliver live video streaming at the most challenging network condition. And another area we're getting more and more requirements is from the drone market. Where drones used to be for hobbyists and for the military, drones today are mainstream not only for public safety market, police, firefighter, search and rescue, but also for inspection, survey, surveillance, and now even the delivery markets. 
you know, drones delivering, you know, medicine or all these uh, supplies. And our multi-link bonding technology delivers stable live video streaming for all of these applications and used by video professionals who require these reliable solutions. And now I'd like to pass it on to Aki, who will talk about this intelligent encoding multi-link technology. And then he will show us a live demo and video streaming tips over the 4G and 5G network. So go ahead, Aki. Okay, hi everyone. So let's take a look at the video control over the cell phone LTE network. Okay, uh, let's take this uh, video, uh, this chart. This actually uh, on the left hand side is a video camera and attached with uh, our encoder. By the way, encoder is looks like this. And uh, we use a modem here like this. So uh, you have a multiple modem link to create together and we send that audio video package through the internet. And uh, to the right hand side is the receiver actually is a laptop or the PC uh, running on the Windows 10. We have a receiver software. And uh, this is a one way video uh, the transmission. On the audio, we have a two way. Uh, so you can talk to from the uh, receiver side to the, uh, the encoder side. So uh, it's two way communication. Okay, that's a take a look at next pages. And here we talk about uh, in the back end, our protocol is a RASCO. Actually, this is based on the uh, H.265 compression. And also we do the video processing or the analytics optimization, those are, are based on the, our own uh, the technology called RASCO, which is uh, mean real-time auto speed control based on waterway model. And let's talk, talk about the waterway model a little bit. And um, this is a chart on left hand side, the pinkish chart. On the vertical side, it's a network speed. Also, also you can call it a bit rate. On the horizontal, it's a time. So when you have a very good uh, bandwidth, start with the transmission, for many reasons uh, that will drop it down and sometimes it drops down to very bottom of the body as almost cannot the compression, compress the video to transfer. over. And then and you're coming back again. And uh, as you know, that video processing in any kind of speed changing or the bit rate changing, you will damage the video quality. However, uh, our optimization it detects those uh, video dramatically changing, and we, based on that uh, situation, we make the every bit rate the picture will be as smooth as possible. And uh, also, so as you know, that's the RTP based on the streaming protocol. And uh, again, we use the audio, and we prioritize the user audio transmission, and for that to connect a tight point to point. And then when you have a more bit rate available, we send a more picture or higher the uh, resolution. And also um, this is a multiple, uh, multiple network you can connect together uh, bonding. Um, in this OS is up to four. Actually, basically it's a, usage is a three. If you don't use the, the control uh, band, you also can use up, up to four uh, modem. And this could be different uh, carrier. For example, in US, it's a, AT&T, uh, Verizon, or T-Mobile, and you all can um, bond them together to make the entire bit rate uh, the higher, so you can send the uh, more video uh, quality. Okay, uh, this is a uh, very simple, and uh, let's talk about the point to point. How do we do this? In this picture, oh, uh, by the way, we also have a Zao app, and this can install on the smartphone. And uh, we use this picture because it's a simple for uh, explanation. So uh, what we put is uh, on the receiver side, you need the global IP address. So we will put it on this on the, uh, the, the Zao app. So it's sent through internet. And the other hand, uh, it's, uh, as I say, uh, it's a Windows 10 uh, PC. You can receive this one. And after receive, whether you can uh, directly put it into the, your monitor, SDI monitor or HDMI monitor. Also at the same time, if you like, you can send this to the stream to YouTube or the Facebook Live or another uh, online services. Oh, next page, please. And this is a detail of the app. Pretty much it's simple. On the uh, middle or top, 
this is where you put the IP address. And on the left corner, it's a setting button. And all others uh, function is pretty much similar to the regular uh, application. And when you're ready, uh, you just hit the red button that start to uh, transmission. Um, okay, and this is a receiver side. And uh, uh, you know, you can hear, you can see on the left hand side, it's a network uh, situation, how you connect it. On the evil receiver side, you also can see it. And uh, bit rate, frame rate, I can show you this on the setting uh, screen later. Uh, however, here, uh, we just want to mention you that, uh, uh, you know, the receiver side, you can push this to the live uh, your SDI output, or you can put a monitor, and at the same time, you also can stream our uh, RTMP, RTSP uh, protocol, it's available. Okay, uh, so let me uh, switch to my uh, screen to show you. I'm going to show you is uh, receiver software. Uh, it's a single channel. So right now you'll see here, and I have a pre uh, pre record file. I just uh, simulation open this up, and this is a uh, the file. It, it just pretend that the, you have a file receive in, right? And this is uh, on my laptop. And uh, if I can put a full screen, oh, uh, full screen. I have to go into another screen, but uh, uh, just for now. And uh, I just hit the stop button, so you can see on the left hand side here is a bit ray. You can change the bit ray and also change the frame ray and resolution. This all on based on your network situation, you can adjust it. And uh, this is a, a latency. Uh, by the way, base A4, I would like to say half second is available when you do the, uh, the broadcasting. Um, and also here's uh, audio, bit, uh, audio rate. And here encryption, uh, very important. If this is a sensitive file, you can send it to you, you can encrypt it here. And also automatic recording, which is mean if you check this on and uh, you're only one man operation, you can go to on field and send over to your back in your office or your station. And uh, uh, that's automatically will be recorded in uh, MP4. And also here, the transcode. Uh, this we talk about the, when you receive, you also can uh, do the RTMP, RTSP setting. Um, this one transcode is RTMP setting. And uh, um, right now somehow it doesn't allow me to send it to, I can show you the data on the other program, okay? Um, so you will put uh, um, the Facebook here, okay? Um, okay. Let me stop sharing. And I'm going to switch my camera. So I will show you um, actual the uh, uh, transmission. Okay, now you can see this uh, from my GoPro. And this is my iPhone, and I open up, and this um, this is actually my iPhone app, and on the top it's address. So I'm going to hit the the stop button. Oh, oh it's error. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because I'm using one hand, um, it's kind of like a, Probably hit the back button. Okay. So now it's online, and I want. Uh, I'm going to show you another uh, share screen. Okay. So I'm going to stop this one and share this one. Share. So now you will see, uh, this is our full screen, uh, the HD view, and on the right hand side, this is actually from my iPhone. And uh, I'm going to show you, and let me put this full screen. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm going to show, this is our encoder, and attached to this, the HD, uh, uh, the uh, the digital camera 
and we use the HDMI cable attached to our encoder. And here is a three modem. You can see, and this is the encoder. And now I have uh, the video recorder on my camera. And so I'm going to send it to the picture. And let me. Okay, so I hit the uh, hit the stop button. And now the encoder will send it to HD view channel one. Okay. And Okay, so uh, I'm going to switch my camera from uh, the video tape to uh, to the real camera, so you will know that's the real. Okay, and also I'm going to switch my camera from uh, GoPro to my laptop camera. So now you will see there's a three cam, uh, three camera. And I'm going to crop my hand. So uh, that's, that's what you can the HD view. Here on the right hand side is uh, the smartphone. And here this is the encoder. And I both put it about uh, one second delay. Okay, this is one second delay and uh, two meg. This is for iPhone. And here, this is the encoder to two meg. By the way, you can do a more or less and change the frame rate and uh, latency here. And uh, by the way, I use the three modem. It shows up the one, two, three. For some reason you don't want to use, you can just uh, check here uh, and then that, that modem can be stopped. There. Okay, and uh, so these three modem, actually if, because I think it's a share, you don't see the, uh, the graph here, but the uh, uh, three of them should show uh, all that the three on the here. And also again, um, in here you transcoding, right now it's online, so I will show you by another one. This is uh, on the, the other one, it's not online, so you can open up to see the setting, the transcode is uh, uh, when you receive the ride, it, you can transcode it to the RTMP setting here and how you want to send the bit rate. And this is uh, the URL. Um, it depends if you want to send it to YouTube, YouTube URL here and your key here and hit okay. And uh, when you come, it's a starter, you can hit the, this button so you can transmit automatically. Okay. Uh, Overall, this is my uh, very simple but uh, uh, demonstration. Uh, okay, go back to the, the Tommy. Thank you. Great, thank you, Aki, for that demo. And uh, you know, before we go to Q and A, we hope this was uh, helpful. You know, for the audience and for all the video professionals on the call today, and not just uh, you know tips, but hopefully these were some useful insights into asking the right questions for your next uh, streaming project. Okay, so thank you. We're, the, we, we're looking at all these questions. Questions are coming in. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, oh, Aki, here's, here's a good one for you. Um, okay. The question is, uh, what is your bit rate range? Okay, the range that maximizes on this uh, DAO S uh, encoder is up to five main uh, VPS. And uh, below, actually, it's based on the, your network environment. Uh, for example, if I go to the very remote area, it's, I went up, can go low as uh, uh, 2, 240, 250 kilo. But overall, I, was, I would like to say if you have a 500 kilo uh, BPS, that's good enough to send. Of course, it's not a full resolution, but it's good enough for you to uh, broadcast what's going on on the outfield and that the audio is uh, very clear, okay? So that the uh, range is uh, from the bottom, uh, let's say 500K to up to the five main, yes. Thank you, Aki. Yes, uh, here's another question. You know, Aki, you, you talked earlier about YouTube and Facebook, but uh, we have a question 
uh, who, you know, this person wants to know uh, more information, how to stream to YouTube and Facebook? Yes, uh, so as I show on the screen, on the, the, the transcode, uh, what you need is uh, um, the, their streaming uh, URL. This is the unchanges. Uh, you can get this from online and the key, the, the key stream, the key, key is from uh, your unique one. So you have to copy over it and paste on that. And so once you receive the video transmit coming in and you just have to hit the on live button and it's pretty much, it's a, if you preset already, it's very simple. Thank you, Aki. Uh, let's see. And uh, everyone, yeah, thanks for asking all these questions. We, we appreciate it. Um, oh, here's a good, oh, I'll take this one. Um, the question is, what is your pricing? Uh, yes, thanks for asking. You know, pricing is, uh, you know, it's, it's important, of course. But, um, you know, we have different pricing models and we work with the customer's requirements and, um, you know, we're happy to provide, you know, more details. But uh, just to I, you know, illustrate some variations and options, we have uh, you know, pricing for encoders, we have pricing for the mobile app, we have uh, pricing for receiver. You know, today we talked about the point-to-point -point receiver, we have a one channel, four channel, and we have uh, cloud options too, we can talk about later, you know, both for the public and private clouds, you know, on-prem, off-prem, you know, hybrid solutions. So it's a little bit difficult to throw out pricing because, you know, we're not selling products, right? We're selling uh, solutions. We're selling, you know, products and solutions that can solve your, you know, requirements. So it's really a solutions approach. And then, but uh, yeah, we're happy to provide uh, pricing. Uh, so please inquire. But uh, I can say that uh, our pricing is, um, you know, of course, very competitive. And then, um, you know, it will solve your uh, requirements. And I, I also want to add, we have our uh, three pricing models to choose from. Uh, we have a one-time acquisition model. This is for companies, organizations uh, that need the CapEx model. We have a monthly subscription model who, uh, for companies that want to do a, you know, OPEX model. And then we also have a rental model where you can rent these devices by uh, project and project basis. Yeah, so I, I hope that answered the question. Um, okay, oh, here's another question. Oh, this one for Akia. Do you have a cloud receiver option? Oh, yes, uh, we also have the cloud version and we install that uh, on the uh, you know, cloud service such as uh, AWS. And also if you like, you can install in your uh, internal network. And uh, we have a two version. One is the basic, uh, you see the Zao app, that one we can receive up to 12, 12 Zao apps. And also for the premium version, you can add one uh, encoder transmitter to that uh, the, the system, cloud system. And you also, not just a live, you can store that, uh, the storage, the video on demand. Uh, the, also uh, each transmission, uh, because the, uh, you have a GPS information on your smartphone and our encoder also have a GPS device as well. So uh, that will shows up where you shoot from. Uh, so the app also is available. Thank you, Aki. And uh, here's another question. Oh, Aki, this one's for you too. Okay. Uh, the input video, uh, does it accept, uh, accept NDI in the future? Okay, uh, as you know, the NDI is, uh, it, it's a LAN uh, and the gigabit LAN. For us, we are mobile transmission, always it's considering it's outside. But uh, for us, because uh, we are pioneer of the, uh, uh, we developed the H.265 technology by our end, and uh, we have uh, some project that is working on with uh, land camera. At this moment, it's not the product yet, but uh, I would just let to know it's available to do, but uh, for the philosophy or the concept, we have to bring this encoder outside of the network. So it's mobile. And uh, most likely at this moment, it's not uh, fixed for the land uh, as well. But uh, in the future, if that's available, because we already take the land uh, you know, uh, the input to our uh, USB port, it's available. However, at this moment, uh, unfortunately, it's not available yet. Thank you, Aki. 
Uh, let's see, questions are coming in. Thank you. Um, oh, here's a question. Uh, I'll start this one off, Aki, and if you have anything to add, please go ahead. Okay. The question is, uh, how secure is your cloud solution? And um, no, good question. Um, so uh, we partner with uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services. So I can say that they provide the highest level of security in the public cloud uh, space. And, um, you know, so we're not partnering with any tier two or tier three, you know, cloud providers. And, uh, but if security is a concern, which is for, you know, many organizations, then we recommend a on-prem solution where the end user can build their own private cloud or they can partner with their own public cloud provider to architect a hybrid cloud solution that meets their security needs. So in this scenario, we provide a cloud receiver license and uh, provide a recommended hardware spec. And then it's up to the end user to bring in video streaming into their own cloud environment. So yeah, Aki, anything to add to that? Um, well, uh, I think that uh, uh, the cloud is good for the, the teamwork. You can use, uh, uh, everybody can call in. And uh, we have a very unique, uh, because it's a two-way audio, uh, and you can set up this as uh, like, uh, you know, um, the, uh, the meeting room type it. And still everyone is uh, encrypted. So it's concerning the secure, secure conversation too. Okay, that's a lot I, I want to add. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Aki. Yes. And by the way, um, I'll, I'll, I'll share this in the end, but uh, our next webinar is going to be on cloud. So, uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's another question. Uh, Aki, this one's for you. The question is, your intelligent encoding technology is very interesting. Can you explain more how it works? Oh, encoder? Uh, this is the intelligent encoder for our Rascal. Oh, the Rascal. Okay, so uh, let's talk about again uh, the Rascal. It's because when you go to outside of the outfield, uh, whether you are moving or there's a lots of people around you, that also affect your mobile network. So when your mobile network is significant, significantly is dropping, or you're coming back and and back up, uh, back and forth, and uh, we detect that uh, mobile uh, network. Uh, changing situation. So we have uh, our analytics program and uh, on the receiver side that will detect that uh, how many packages um, on the each network you should send more. And uh, we also call this as a, uh, the, the load balancing. So we try to smooth out, make average for each multiple uh, the network connection to make everybody is evenly to be treated because uh, that way when you move for example, move from the one cell tower uh, and uh, far away from that and cross to the other, when the switching, uh, you know, every, every uh, network has to be prepared for that very instant uh, switch over and still consist consistently send the video, uh, the very uh, good video quality in every uh, bit rate. Um, so yeah, overall uh, it's that and again, um, Compared to the uh, um, the other our competitor, uh, they all are focusing send more uh, bit rate and send more higher picture. Uh, however, we limited ourselves, and here uh, we say we think H.265 codec uh, in five meg and transmit in the uh, HDB HD quality, and that's good enough. And uh, we also. Uh, um, very care about the in challenging uh, remote area. So even you just have a very limited uh, the bit rate, uh, we try not cut off the uh, the connection, but stick it with uh, uh, audio bandwidth for the priority. And when you have um, the network available, uh, the environment changes, they will send more picture. So overall, it's our intelligence. It's uh, uh, it automatically analytics and optimize the video quality. That's a rascal. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Aki. Yeah. And then um, actually we have another question about the uh, competitor product. And then Aki, I think you answered it. You know, you answered, you know, part of this next question. Yeah. But um, yeah. And then let me maybe highlight this question and then, you know, please jump in. But uh, the question is today I'm using another competitor product solution. Why should I consider Soliton? So, um, you know, by, by all means, if you're happy with your product, you know, 
then you know keep using it right but you know we still like to ask the question you know are you really getting the best you know return on your investment you know are you really getting the best you know total cost of ownership you know for example you know are there extra costs to adding modems and sims you know are there extra costs when you scale into the cloud you know what does your support look like you know so as soliton our philosophy is to provide the best value you know we may or may not be the cheapest but uh, again you know we're we're selling technology here right solutions you know so um you know the initial cost standpoint but we're confident that we deliver the best value initially or over time so if you're looking at uh, you know new solutions or if you're looking at a hardware refresh you know we ask that you know please take a look at us and we're happy to provide you the right solutions that fit your needs but the aki if you like to add again the question is today i'm using another competitor product why should i consider soliton okay um we are uh, based on the, uh, the Japanese TV stations, the requirement, and uh, you know, we, for a long time, we developed together with the TV stations. And uh, I, I concern that it's a very good uh, uh, you know, experiment. And uh, like I say, we are not giving up on the very challenging uh, network area, uh, even though there's very little bit rate. Uh, we try to very, uh, try very hard to not uh, disconnect that connection and send more video and audio. Uh, so our technology is very focusing on the, uh, uh, the in the challenging network area. And uh, but at the same time also, uh, you know, we, we developed uh, the H.265, uh, the codec and library by our hand from scratch. So we concerning we are a pioneer of the, this, the video audio uh, encryption uh, the maker. So uh, together, we we making uh, improvement of our hardware and software constantly. And uh, please stay with us if you like it. And, uh, and but it's, when you purchase the the product, it's not just the end of there. We update and make it uh, our uh, product better and better. So hopefully you like it. <laughs> Thank you, Aki. Okay, next question. Um, how many phone transmissions and encoder transmission can be received by the same receiver? Okay, um, so I showed two um, receiver software here. One is a, a HD view single channel we call. Uh, that one when you purchase the encoder that is come with it. So it's receive only one, uh, the encoder coming in or it's our app only one. However, uh, we also have a HD view four channel that software and uh, based on the hardware, you, you have to have the, um, the Black Magic video uh, quad, uh, decoding card quad or quad two. And that one we can receive uh, simultaneously up to four um, encoder coming in. Encoder or uh, our app, it's about the same. So that's, uh, um, again, that the answer is, uh, HD view single received one uh, video transmission and HD view four uh, channel is received up to four uh, transmission. Thank you, Aki. Um, okay, next question. What is the minimum bandwidth that your equipment can transmit at a acceptable quality of video? Okay, so quality video, that depends on your definition. Um, let's say in 500 kilo, uh, because uh, mostly uh, that's the more um, in US, the most the TV station, when they go into online, if uh, you know, they want to put in the, the TV reporter, of course, uh, if you want to do full HD, the probably is, uh, you know, at least you probably need a 1.5 or 2 meg, but if you can accept that video quality, it's kind of like uh, pixel rated, but they still have a smooth, uh, the, the quality of the, uh, the reporter and the good sound quality. And I would say 500 kilo, it's uh, 500 kilo BPS. It, it's, uh, I think it's a minimum uh, for the TV broadcasting, but it can go up lower um, if you don't mind. And uh, actually it's pretty uh, clear if you want to see what's going on there, uh, you can show very, good quality of picture. Of course, it's a pixel rated, but uh, 
um, not too bad. But for the, uh, the broadcasting, uh, the quality for the broadcast, picture in picture type of the usage, I would say it's a 500 kilo uh, VPS. Thank you, Aki. Uh, let's see here. We have a few more questions here. Uh, here's a question. We use OBS for streaming. How can we use OBS with your device? Oh, uh, so OBS, uh, just like uh, I explained uh, the, um, the live stream to the YouTube and Facebook, and OBS it, uh, accept RTSB. So in our picture, let me show my, my computer. I'm trying to... Um, let me, let me open up my OBS. I can show you that. It takes time. Uh, so by using RTSP, because our receiver received the video transmission at the same time, that also stream the RTSP out. So uh, you just have to put the, your, uh, the IP address and uh, the port, then that RTSP can show up in the, okay, let me, my, my OBS is coming up. And uh, I have to share my screen. Um, somehow, I cannot share my screen. Uh, Um, this is screen two. Can everybody see my screen? It's uh, showing all OBS. Ah, uh, no, not yet. Okay, this is a block screen. Actually, it's OBS, and you will see here. Um, I have RTSV demo. You know what? Actually, we we see you, but not not the screen. Oh, not screen. Okay, let me share it again. <laughs> Oh, there we um, go. Thank you. Okay, so this OBS inside, and I have a preset RTSP demo. And uh, here, you just uh, click up the what the RTSP setting. Actually, this is the port the sending from, and I mean IP address is sending from, and this is the port. And uh, you just type RTSP, and this when you said OK, and they were coming up to here. Yeah, so it's pretty much simple. Uh, OBS can take the RTSB input. Okay. All right. Thank you. So uh, here's a question. Um, you know, please explain the the bonded bonding uh, technology and uh, how to purchase it. Um, maybe let, let me address this. Um, so the our bonding, you know, technology is built into the the software. So it's a you know, it's a hardware encoder transmitter uh, solution. And the, so you can purchase our, uh, the device, you know, from us. Now, as for the modems, um, you know, our, this is a external modem strategy. And it's for a reason, because you can take our uh, encoder to really anywhere in the world. So you don't need to worry about these internal modems. And that way, you know, if you're in, the US, uh, just like Aki said, you can hook up uh, three external modems, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. You know, if you're in um, you know, Argentina, you can hook up uh, you know, three modems. If you're in you know, Japan, you know, those uh, three external modems. So it's an external modem for, for a reason where you can um, you know, use these modems anywhere really in the world. Yeah, thank you, Tommy. Uh, this is actually the, how the, the modem looks like. It's just like a USB stick, and the internal inside you you have to go to the um, the for example this is more uh, the Verizon you just go to Verizon uh, business account that you asking the SIM card for this one actually the the regular commercial also they sell the the SIM data only uh, and uh, you just have to purchase this one in US um, almost uh, everyone will have to test so you can attach to our uh, encoder. Thank you. Thank you, Aki. And then here's a related question. Um, you know, this, this person uh, mentioned that, uh, you know, he's new to this technology and then, you know, uh, this person would like to send uh, football games.
directly from the uh, low power broadcasting station live. So how can the question is, you know, how can uh, this person send, you know, a football game, live video streaming for uh, LPTV? Okay. Um, so let's say from the, from the encoder side outfield, you go to the football game, um, you have a, a external modem and uh, you just shoot uh, uh, your, from your camera, you have a H HDMI cable or SDI cable attached to our encoder. And uh, on the receiver side, in your station, you just put uh, the HD view single software that's come with our encoder. So you have to install that one in your computer. Um, assumption is you need the global static IP address for your um, at the station side. And if you don't have the direct uh, static IP, uh, there's a network is called uh, network port forward setting. So you just have to your uh, system network administrator to set up this uh, file, open the firewall and let allow, allow our video transmission port to come into your network. And uh, that's a regular usage. Uh, but if you are moving, for example, uh, you have to receive it in a uh, you know, particular, not always you are uh, broadcast to, but uh, you have temporary location and they just have an internet, but uh, they don't have a static IP. Another solution is you can set up the VPN connection. So the VPN has a static IP and from the encoder side, you just uh, put that uh, VPN static IP address into your encoder so you can start to send it with. And, and uh, also it depends on your uh, network, how you take the video uh, input to your system. Um, mostly uh, standard would be uh, SDI output. So we, we provide the SDI uh, 1080i uh, format uh, you can attach to, or if you already, um, you know, have your um, IP network, IP network uh, media, and that will be either RTMP or RTSP to stream out or NDI. Uh, by the way, NDI is a new tech, uh, the network uh, solution. Um, we are put inside is our standard uh, mode. So uh, you just check that button NDI so it can stream to the NDI solution. Thank you, Aki. So we have uh, two more questions, but uh, yeah, yeah keep, keep them coming. So the first one is, um, you know, uh, can modem be acquired separately or is it combined with the solution? So, um, you know, uh, I'll address that in Aki-san, you know, maybe please jump in, but the, mm -hmm. so the modems are separate uh, because for the reasons that I mentioned uh, earlier, you can, you know, depending on where you are, the country you are in, you can choose your own modems, which is uh, very helpful for the video professionals. Um, however, you know, depending on the market, for example, for the US market, we have a bundled solution as well, where we can provide the encoder and the modems, um, you know, on a monthly payment or when, uh, when we do rentals, we provide the, the full solution. So it's really a turnkey solution. Um, you get the whole package with the modems. All you need is a camera and uh, you're, you're ready, set, go. So anything else to add, Aki? Oh, well, uh, we, uh, before you purchase, uh, we, we can have, uh, based on your location, and we can uh, take a very quick research for you, uh, which uh, you know, depends on where you want to shoot for, from. Um, we, we will suggest which the, uh, the carrier will be uh, maybe suitable for your area. And based on that, we have our test the modem list. And based on that, we will give you the modem number. Uh, mostly you can purchase that from the Amazon or you can go directly to the, uh, um, the, the, to the carrier side. Uh, by the way, um, again, this, uh, this modem, this type, uh, the most uh, right now, the U.S. Uh, the U.S. the carrier they start they stopped to, to selling this type of USB modem. Uh, what they they sell is uh, more like uh, hotspot type. Uh, as you know, hotspot type it can be used like uh, you know uh, the Wi-Fi share hotspot. However, we're using that one as a USB tethering. So the other word is we use a USB cable attached to those kind of. Uh, hotspot type modem 
it's just a little bit square type and has a battery. A uh, little bit heavier, but uh, because it's using battery, so it's, it's more sta stabilized. Um, so that's uh, mostly the current in US, those uh, uh, the carrier, they start to, to sell that uh, uh, hotspot type of modem only. But it's uh, for us, it's very easy to connect with it. Great, thank you. And here's the last question. Um, the question is, you know, I work for a major TV station and I uh, shoot uh, live streaming video from drones. Uh, do I connect your encoder to the drone or to the receiver pad? Oh, okay. Um, so the drone, most likely they have a controller and the uh, most popular one would be they using like uh, uh, the tablet or type uh, touch panel. So they were both seeing, use that to um, the control the drone. And uh, in that, uh, we call controller the uh, pad. Uh, from there, they have a HDMI output. Most likely they uh, provide a, a 1080p. So we connect that one with our encoder and to our HDP, uh, HDMI input uh, port. So uh, that's a very easy uh, for us, just attach to that the controller port and uh, um, it's available to send it. Great, thank you. Well, that's all the questions that we had, but um, you know, we'd like to, uh, on behalf of our Soliton Systems, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We hope this was useful for your you know, current projects and for your next you know, project too. And here's the contact info. Please feel free to reach out, reach out you know, with any questions. You know, we're happy to address them. If you have any questions on your current video architecture, or if you want a second opinion, or if you have any ideas, you know, thoughts about streaming application, give us a call. You know, we love to discuss technology and we love to find solutions, you know, to your challenges. So, um, you know, I just want to close saying that Soliton Systems is here to provide live video streaming solutions. And please keep in mind you know, please keep us in mind for your next video project where reliable, you know, stable quality video streaming is a requirement in the most challenging network areas. And uh, I'll end this with this uh, last, uh, last slide and the announcement for our next webinar, which is July 14, 10 a.m. PST. And the topic is going to be successfully stream live video to the cloud for your team. So, you know, I know Aki mentioned about our cloud receiver options. Uh, this is gonna be a very exciting, you know, not to miss webinar. So please join us on July 14th. And if you um, have any questions, reach out. And, uh, you know, we do have some uh, special pricing offers for July. So please do reach out. So uh, again, thank you everyone for joining. Stay safe out there and uh, see you soon. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for joining. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.